Well, hello, I am Matt Williamson coming at you here day after the game. Um, I just have all, as I usually do right after a Steeler game, lots of random notes, more time to reflect, all that good stuff. And I'm still in the corner of what I said last night, that this is a tremendous win. I kind of, in this case, just don't care how you got there. And we'll get to a lot of these points, but this rivalry is still strong. And we got a new infusion of young players on both sides and, and, you know, guys like Patrick Peterson that hadn't been part of it before. I think he had a comment after the game and Lamar actually played and hopefully Lamar and Pickett do this for the next 10 years. We'll get to Pickett in a moment, but that's tremendous. It's good for football. It's good for Steeler Nation, all that good stuff. But back to Pickett, zero turnovers. To me, that might be the key right now. I mean, if you can start there, kind of reminds me coming out of the bye last year. You come out of the bye last year, Kenny, in his rookie year, doesn't turn the ball over really after that. They win a lot of games. You know, we don't maybe expect them to be Joe Montana right now is not quite logical. Just start with not turn the ball over. They didn't turn the ball over. They won. It's a lot of games in a row or a lot of games, period, where he starts, he doesn't turn the ball over, and their record's really good. Um, he was 7 of 15 for 60 yards in the first half and missing guys left and right and didn't look comfortable. But he was 11 of 17 for 164 yards and, and a touchdown in the second half. Like, if he could put two of those halves together and be 22 of 34 for well over 300 yards, two touches, how about that? You know, I mean, like, that. maybe that's step two after don't turn the ball over. And I think that we've seen enough of this guy to say there is some clutchness to him, too. You know, he did his best when they needed him most in this game. Was it exactly beautiful Tom Brady, you know, statuesque, beautiful, you know, perfect? Of course not. But we saw a lot of this in the second half of the 2022 season. I mean, this game kind of reminded me of the second half of last year and maybe pick it more so, more so than anything. And... This was his fourth fourth quarter comeback of his career already. I mean, how many games has the dude started? And a couple of them, you were winning the fourth quarter. So, not all's well. Don't get me wrong. But it kind of feels like what we were seeing from him in the second half of last year. Which, considering what we saw up till now, man, I'll take it. I mean, that's a good start to get back on the horse. And you don't get back on the horse in one jump, you know? Um. So your defense. Now, this could have went a lot of different ways, and they got some breaks, and Harbaugh could have kicked the field goal to end the half. But despite basically looking pretty terrible for the first half of football, defense only allowed 10 points to a pretty good offense and Lamar Jackson. I mean, that's just a fact. Killebrew, I think we need to call out again. He's an elite special teams player. One thing I'm going to do this week, and we'll talk about it, is review the core special teamers and who's getting snaps and all that. I haven't done that for a couple of weeks, but Killebrew is the best of the bunch. I mean, he is a core, core special teamer and one of the best in the league. People have referred to him as possibly the best punt blocker in the league. Maybe that was Tomlin. I'm not positive, but he's blocked four of them in his career. You don't get many opportunities to block punts. Because not only do you have to be on the punt team, for one, but they have to call a punt block. <laughs> you know, sometimes they don't even call punt block. So you have four of them in your career, pretty darn good. And I just want to call Rodney Williams on that play as well. I'm a fan. I don't think I talked to you about Rodney Williams since camp. He's leaner, you know, but he works hard as a blocker. Effort is there. He has some ability. Uh, I was glad he was still with the team when cuts you know, we're done and practice squad time and all that. I think he'll be useful. I don't think he'll embarrass himself. I hope he gets to camp next year. Probably see him a little bit. We'll bring him up again here in a minute too. So good stuff. Would have loved to see him get his feet in and make that a touchdown, but that'd have been a heck of a play. So here's some more stuff. Baltimore had just 25 rushing yards on eight carries 
in the second half. I mean, they're playing with lead. So, Mar Jackson, eight carries for 25 yards. The Steelers, meanwhile, had 51 rushing yards in the second half. Became they, they definitely became the more physical team in this game. That was stressed all week. And again, it kind of reminded me a little of second half last year. Run the ball. It's not pretty. Make some clutch plays. Don't turn the ball over. Be physical at the point of attack. So, first half field position, not including a kneel down possession to end the half. The Steelers got the ball at their own four, their own 25, 10, and 49. And when they got the ball at their 49, they converted that into a field goal. I mean, again, this offense is far from fixed. But when you start at your own four and 10, not easy to produce points. They did limit their three and outs, though. Uh, that was a huge problem. Uh, and I review the stats and stuff, so many three and outs. But in this game, 10 meaningful possessions. They didn't, didn't include taking the knee at the end of the half, which doesn't count. Only two three and outs. You'll take that. I mean, considering where this team is at, you'll take that. Ravens are pretty good defense. Ravens had four three and outs, all in the fourth quarter, when it mattered most. And even when Baltimore did get a first down in the second half, that was typically pretty much all they got. The, the Ravens had four total first downs in the second half, and nine of their dozen possessions accounted for two or fewer first downs. You'll take it. I mean, Jackson's final five runs, he only had 19 yards. They got a pretty good beat on him and started hitting him and had a pretty good feel for him. Only the Chiefs and, Char- Chiefs and Steelers now have beaten Jackson three times in his career. And Lamar did miss the past three contexts before this. So I have some more Lamar stats here. Where is that? They should have him lumped in with this one. But uh, here he is. He's one in three versus Steelers. He's only lost to the Chiefs and Steelers three times in his career. His career stats versus Pittsburgh are four touchdown passes versus seven interceptions. And in those four games, he was sacked 20 times. It's a hard guy to bundle up and they do it really better than anyone all right i'll be back quick break i could use a little sip of water here and then i got a lot more for you all right i knew highsmith had a really good game I mean, anyone could tell you that. But he had 11 pressures. He was credited with 11 pressures in this game. And I don't know where I read this or heard it or whatever, but I heard someone throw out, is this the best edge tandem in the NFL? I can give it some thought. I mean, the Eagles got some dudes in Dallas, and there's some good ones out there. But Highsmith's now in that category where it's not like, Ah, he's a cute little story. He's a big-time player. Showed it again here. And while we're talking edge dudes, I want to throw the little uh, light on Marcus Golden, too. I thought he showed up very, very well and is really perfect as a three. And if you're going to talk about the best edge room in the league, Golden and Herbig, who's kind of been a little bit out of sight, out of mind lately, certainly help that cause. They do not hurt it at all. Speaking about, you know, newer defensive players that have been around the block. Quan Alexander. I mean, I mentioned yesterday that I was really impressed with the inside linebacker spot overall in this game. But he ended up with the day with a sack, which you probably remember, three quarterback hits, and three tackles for loss for Quan Alexander. And didn't play every snap. I mean, it's a nice pickup, you know, especially late in the free agency. It sure looks like, and I think I'll get this confirmed in the next day or so, and I hope it's the case because I think it's long overdue, that Porter is going to replace Peterson as the left corner. That hasn't been announced. I'm just kind of reading the tea leaves. No one told me that. It needs to happen. So I would imagine Wallace will stay at the right corner, which that's not perfect. Maybe King could do that. Maybe. Porter will be your left corner, hopefully for the next decade. Who knows? And Peterson can do some safety slot veteran stuff that he was brought here to do. Maybe take something off 
Sullivan's plate, or maybe King can take more off Sullivan's plate. He's not doing much. Um, I need to figure out why King isn't more involved yet, but it looks like Porter's about to be. So some more random notes, and I'm not even complaining about this. It probably hurt the Steelers more than the Ravens, considering the nature of their pass rushers. But Jeffers, Carl Jeffers' team, I thought this during the game, and then I went back and looked at the, the penalties called. A lot of uncalled, uncalled holding penalties in this game. Let's just leave it at that, which, hey, I mean, that's better for the viewer. I bet nine out of ten fans would rather see that. If you're one of the fans that has High Smith and Watt on your favorite team, maybe you wouldn't, but just throwing it out there, and it was for both teams. I mean, hey, the Steelers O linemen were getting away with stuff too. As we often do, let's talk offensive skill snap counts. There were 66 possible snaps in this game for the offense. Najee got 37 of them. Warren got 32. They ran almost exactly the same number of routes. Najee, 13. Warren, 14. Targets, though, this is where it always the discrepancy comes in. Warren got four compared to one to Harris. Harris had 14 carries, though, compared to eight for Warren. We're going to get into that more in the bye week, but... I'm thinking that split's pretty solid and probably the way I would go. Wide receivers. So, again, 66 possible snap. Pickens had 58. Rarely will receiver play every route. I mean, especially with him running go routes. I mean, you need to take a break, come out for a breather. But what's killer, and it's not their fault, it's just the hand they were dealt, Robinson's out there for 57 snaps. He needs to be out there for 18. I mean, that's what I, I think of the player now. Austin probably would have been out there more, certainly would have. He got 37. Because of that, Boykin got 12. Gunner got four. You know my thoughts on that. I grumble when I say such things. Now, the tight end rotation was, I got, got found a little more in-depth stuff here as to how. But out of 66 snaps, Washington played 46. Hayward played 37. My buddy Williams played four. So these are some nuggets from Pro Football Focus, more of a fantasy angle, but you can see how they're using these tight ends. They use both Washington and Hayward significantly, with both players running 18 routes, just under 50% of possible routes each. Okay. Washington played more snaps in both 11 and 21 personnel. The Steelers offense was pretty balanced when he was on the field. When Hayward was on the field in 11 personnel, the Steelers passed the ball on 18 of 20 plays, but Hayward stayed in to block on four of those plays. So it doesn't mean he ran a route every time. I'm going to get to that in a second here. Hayward caught three passes for 23 yards while Washington was held without a catch. And I think they probably, they won't t admit this, but probably had to zag a little bit when Austin got banged up and make Hayward. That's the beauty of Hayward, though. Like if Harris got hurt, Hayward could be your backup receiver or running back. If you lose a slot, he can do some of that. If you're light at receiver, he runs more routes. So this was a good opportunity for Hayward, who I think is a valuable player and gives him a little bit of the middle of the field stuff that is lacking elsewhere, to say the least. That brings me to Pickens again a little bit. If you look at, well, if you look at Kenny's throw chart and you look at Pickens' route tree, Still very little between the numbers, especially with Pickens. So many of those tight, contested sideline routes where corners get to use the, the, the sideline to their advantage. And frankly, Pickens is one of the best in the league at doing those. They're just extremely high difficulty completions, even if your guy's a great ball winner that Pickens is. So... I need, still need to see more in-breaking stuff, more in, you know, over the middle, you know, more after the catch. Um, so a little bit about the Ravens, and then we'll wrap this thing up. They had 70 offensive snaps. Odell only played 37. Bateman only played 27. All this talk that they finally were going to get those two and Flowers and Andrews on the field together, and we would see the Ravens playing, blah, blah, blah. Ravens are getting nothing from Odell. And when they made that signing, I thought, boy, this is going to be a bad investment. And it flat out has been. Maybe it changes. 
I like Bateman a lot coming out of school, and maybe this is just first game back and he'll ease into things. But the fact is they're really getting nothing from Beckman and Bateman thus far. And fortunately, Nelson Aguilar, who's kind of forgotten, has played pretty well for them. I mean, he was, even the majority of this game, he was their primary slot receiver, where he was, you know, outplaying to some degree Bateman and Odell. Um, and then other little nugget here, Patrick Ricard, who I have great respect for, didn't know what his role would be in this new Todd Monken offense. He played 26 out of 70 snaps, and he's really good at what he does. I'd love them to be a stealer. They played so much two and three tight end set stuff last year, and Andrews played a ton, as you'd expect, and he's really good. And Andrews and Flowers got the, got the you know, they get the targets. But no other tight end besides Isaiah likely saw the field, and he only played eight snaps. So much different philosophy with their tight ends. And wrap this thing up on a good note. And how many times did I tell you last week that the Steelers situation is better than their tape? Well, the situation got a lot better, a lot better with this win. Not only are they in first place in the AFC North right now, but they would be the three seed in the AFC playoffs, if you can imagine that. <laughs> it's bonkers. It really is. Um, I'm, yeah, I don't know about that. So I was going to tease something I may or may not do, but there you have it. Mostly positive stuff and wins do that over and out.